everyone on the Game Beaver, and welcome to Sizing Up Sharks, the Lords of the Sea. Uh, I, I did, I, <laughs> I don't know, um, what sort of provoked me to do this, but I thought it was really cool. Uh, this is a National Geographic website, uh, where you can size up, uh, sharks in comparison to how big a human is. And I got a little, I opened this the other day. I scrolled a little bit down because I was like, oh, I'm curious about this. And then I was like, oh, that's cool. And I just sort of went, yeah, I'm actually going to make an episode on this. So, uh, hello and welcome. <laughs> I thought this is awesome. So we're going to go up and down and see how big we are in comparison to uh, some of the sharks that are out there. Maybe we'll learn something. I'll learn something. We'll, like, see, we'll read facts and all that jibbity jazz. So first, so I'll read the title. Sharks range in size from the largest fish on the planet to the length of your palm. Still pretty big if you've got hands like me. See how you compare to some of these vulnerable predators that are so crucial to the ocean's health. So we're starting off with the whale shark. What I didn't realize, if this illustration is right, like... You can see the gills of the shark. I like. I know sharks have gills, but I can't say I've ever seen a whale shark's gills, and that's something that's never like occurred to me. I've never thought, wait, if a whale shark filter feeds, how does it filter out? But yeah, it would have to have gills. I've just never put the two and two together. So yeah, there's its gills. All teeth shown are magnified and in proportion to one another. So, is that a tooth? Do they have teeth? I, I mean, they've got to have teeth. Like, every blueprint of something, like, everything on land has, like, five fingers. Horses have five fingers, but they've just, like, receded up through evolution. The slow-moving, filter-feeding shark is the largest known fish species alive. So I think the whale shark is the biggest shark alive right now. So we're, oh, look at us, we're a little diver. Whee! So we're going to move down. This is the one I saw. This is the great hammerhead shark. And I was looking at this, and I was like... That's actually massive! That is a huge shark! Great hammerhead? That's insane! I never thought they would be that big! Like, I don't know, I'm a six foot guy, and I'm imagining this diver's about six foot, maybe. And that's massive! I thought they'd probably be the size of me, you know, six foot. But that's like, 20 foot! It could go up to 20 foot! A wide head helps these sharks scan for the pin down rays. Another prey. Oh, see, <laughs> I did so terribly there. I should have get that another go. A white head. Ha a white head. I I can't say that. A white head helps these sharks scan for the. A white head helps these sharks scan for and pin down raise another prey. There we go. Got it eventually. So that huge white head has sensors underneath it. And I always thought that they like scan sand, like they'll just run over it. And if they sense any electromagnetic uh, pulses or anything moving in the sand, then they could just easily like dive down for it. Uh, I think that's probably what they do, but more scientifically accurate, more, more scientific lingo than what I've given it. So the next one, really? Look how big the great hammer hedgehog is in comparison to the great white. They are literally the same size. I never knew that. Re are they really that big? They're massive. And I'm pretty sure hammerheads are dangerous too. Although you think it's hard to be bitten by a hammerhead when his nose goes out that far. So he's like, Ow. he can't really bite anything with that. But I mean, I guess you could like, ah. and do that. So, I don't know, maybe. Uh, but I think the great white's maybe more. It looks scarier. So here's the great white. The great white shark, Carcaradon Carcaris. This legendary predator lives in coastal surface waters worldwide. Its serrated teeth may be a link to extinct ancestors, which is supposedly, this is an ancestor of the Megalodon, the biggest shark ever known to exist. Uh, the great white is one of those rare sharks that can actually maintain its own body temperature, allowing it to uh, survive in colder waters. And supposedly, and I've probably mentioned this before, uh, great whites have been seen off the coast of England. Supposedly. Uh, there are other species out here. We have poor beagle, I think, uh, which is basically the same as great white, but a lot smaller. They have the same colorings. So it could be easy to mistake them, but uh, there have been stories of great whites uh, in... Um, the coastal waters of uh, England. So, 
I'm gonna move down. Oh, it looks even bigger, possibly even bigger, the Greenland shark. Scientists suspect that this slow growing Arctic species can live up to a hundred years. So as opposed to these sharks, the Greenland shark is actually really slow. Um, if you've ever seen it on like a, a, um, a nature program or whatever, um, incredibly slow moving literally just like almost as if it's dead that's how i picture it it's like it's just sort of swimming side to side but it's very much alive um status near threatened i guess not many people fish in the arctic but then yeah they do but maybe this lives more near iceberg i don't no idea <laughs> but wow it's a lot of meat on that uh, oh here we go one of the most aggressive, uh, near threatened, the tiger shark. How is the tiger shark near threatened and the great white is vulnerable? I would imagine the great white is threatened. But, uh, tiger sharks. I think tiger sharks have attacked more people than great whites. This, sh this shark is named for its distinct black stripes, which fade in adulthood. The, uh, yeah, tiger shark, incredibly aggressive. Grows almost as big as a great white and... Um, has, I think, killed more people than a great white has. Uh, the tiger shark, if it sees a human, will probably attack it, or more likely attack it than a great white would. A great white usually attacks a human due to, um, it mis mistaking it for, like, a seal or something. So, uh, yes, again, a shark you don't really want to go up against. <laughs> Look at that size. The blunt nose six gill. Oh, he looks like, he's like, hmm. Sharks typically have five gills, but this primitive species has six gills. Most related species are extinct. So this shark, wow, that's cool, we're discovering new things. Um, I've never heard of this shark before. Blunt nose six gill shark. So maybe this is like, it must be an ancestor from a shark species that, from long ago. Um, six gills. Because like I said, most sharks have a blueprint of like, they'll, be, they'll all go back to one shark that had five gills, Da, 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 da. And this one must go back to a link from a different species, a subspecies. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we have the oceanic white tip. Due to high demand for shark fin soup. I'm looking at you, China. Uh, <laughs> these large fin sharks are in decline. They're vulnerable. But yeah, again, shark finning, terrible, terrible practice. Literally, I, I would suggest not even Google it. Don't even Google it. You'll find images that are very upsetting. Unless you want to face the truth then you can search it, but there's um, a lot of uh, companies out there, mostly Asian, because shark fin soup is an Asian cuisine, uh, that catch the sharks, chop off all their fins, and then throw them back, still alive. It's deeply unsettling, and it is a practice that still goes on today, um, and really shouldn't, it's, it's horrible. Um, ooh, but who am, I, who am I to talk? The angel shark, oh look at this little cutie. Uh, critically endangered it but it looks so beautiful with flat bodies and broad pectoral fins angel sharks resemble rays and skates very closely linked rays uh, stingrays you wouldn't have thought so uh, the Japanese saw shark its long toothy snout helps it sift sands for prey but can get snared in gill nets insufficient data wow it must be such a rare species I know the, the uh, giant sawfish, I think that's a shark too, which it may be on this list actually. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a guess at this shark and say, no, I thought it would be the cookie cutter shark. Portuguese dog, dogfish. These bottom feeders live in darkness at depths greater than all other sharks. Near, how can that be near threatened? I'm sure we haven't done much to that one. <laughs> near threatened as in, we don't really see much of that one. If that's three foot, then this diver must be five foot something then. The horn shark? The solitary shark uses its horned head to crack open mollusks and crustaceans. Uh, insufficient data. I guess we don't care about them or we don't really find many. That, oh, the, oh look, the dwarf lantern shark. Bioluminescent organs make these tiny sharks glow in the dark, attracting prey. You can see on the fins where that is. So down in the depths, no sunlight can penetrate that deep. So uh, fish have actually uh, managed to create lights themselves. Bioluminescent lights. It's insane. Uh, that It's like um, bacteria inside them light up. Weird, crazy stuff. Um, if we could harness that, we could like make 
completely green energy. I'd imagine. Oh, God. Oh, there it is. Yep, yeah, that's what we've been waiting for. That is the Megalodon, a shark we do not want to go swimming with. <laughs> Status extinct. A seven-inch fossil tooth of this extinct shark was used to project the scale of its massive body, which would have included jaws more than six feet wide. I'm looking at... I can see, like, how big this, um, this shark tooth is. It's, like, that big. It's as big as my head. It's, it's tooth is as big as my head. Oh my god, that is scary. God, thank god that thing's extinct. And that is it. Oh, that's cool though. So look at all of these. I was hoping we'd see some more prehistoric sharks. Um, I mean, if they went to the trouble of making all this, I would have thought maybe we'd have... Because um... there were some big ones. I can't name any right now. But stuff like um, Lizichthys. You know, some other fish. Some other fish. That would be pretty cool. Um... But yeah, wow, we started really big. Does it go down in size? Is that what it is? Oh, it does. I didn't even notice. So you get really small and then boom. <laughs> Which can grow up to 45 to 60 foot long. That is insane. It really... But nobody knows whether it is extinct. It's it's believed to be extinct. But we have no proof as to whether they are, they are alive now or whether they are extinct. Just uh, fossil records of them living long ago but if a shark like this really exists it's got to be living off some sort of prey large enough to sustain this sort of body type and body mass um and all that we know that exists in the ocean are whales and whales are pretty endangered now because again fishing and blubber and all that jazz so um the likelihood of a megalodon existing be very small and it'd be, if they if they did exist there'd be a, a tiny fraction of them a, a few maybe 10 20 out of magic I, I don't know i don't know too much i can't actually say this with confidence so don't take what i'm saying legit <laughs> well beaver said they exist <laughs> so guys that was awesome i just want to have a quick look because um i thought we would share this because it's cool and look at that the great white shark's tooth all along the edge is ridged so basically this shark bites and it's not its bite that kills you. It's not it's clamping down like a lion or um, another like a mammal. What kills you is its slicing motion. It's like knives. It's like being bitten by a mouthful of knives. But it clamps down and then shakes. And as it shakes, this sh this um, sawtooth uh, ridge on each side of the um, tooth, as well as all the other teeth, then start cutting you up. And then you die due to blood loss, basically. An incredible evolution. This shark has not evolved in millions of years. And in fact, the Megalodon, which pretty much resembles a Great White, existed back then. A Great White is just a small Megalodon that has... Um, I would imagine that maybe the two existed at the same time, but the Megalodon went extinct, whereas a smaller species that could live on, you know smaller things and sustain itself better um survived as uh, the megalodon which needed a lot a lot of food died out so i'd imagine maybe it's prey that existed at the time also died out or there is hypotheses that the whales moved into colder oceans which the megalodon could not hunt in because i'm pretty sure the megalodon existed in the ice age sort of times there'll be a certain period an era as to when it existed but um for the life of me, I uh, I cannot remember it. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. It that was pretty awesome, and also hopefully gives us all a respect of life in the ocean and how tiny we are. Seeing it on a screen, you really can't get across the size of it. But if it was there in front of you, I, it probably wouldn't be a good thing. You'd probably be dead, and you'd probably have a heart attack too. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye!